It's an exciting time right now with all the research and homeschool planning for the next school year, so I wanted to help out by answering some common questions I get regarding Apologia Science. Hi, I'm Trisha. Thanks for being here at Juicebox Homeschool. I wanted to answer some common questions that I get about apology of science. And I put up a question box on Instagram maybe about a month ago and finally getting around to responding to all the questions. First, a little bit about Apologia. They are a homeschool curriculum company that produces curriculum from a biblical worldview. They are most known for their science. That's how I first heard about them. And so many people that I talk to talk about their science. They also have a great elementary math curriculum that I've had the privilege of trying for my youngest and it's now one of her favorite things to do during the school day. They also have resources for middle and high schoolers such as self-paced and live classes. The owners, Davis and Rachel Carmen, are veteran homeschools, homeschooling over two decades. They have so much experience and wisdom to share and they host a podcast called Let's Talk Homeschool where they cover all ranges of stages in your homeschool life. They also talk about things to encourage homeschool moms um, in their faith and their devotion lives. So it gives me a lot of confidence in using their curriculum in that not only is it challenging and rigorous, great for families, but it also points to the creator of all things. Okay, so I received a lot of questions on Instagram about Apologia Science in particular. I think I had shown what we're using this year, which is the Exploring Creation with Chemistry and Physics. And I'm using it with my third and my sixth grader this year. And I showed a picture on Instagram of the notebook, I believe. And that's when the questions came in. So I'm gonna try to answer as many as I can today. We have been a user of Apologia for as long as I can remember. We have used other science programs in the past, but have always come back to Apologia for a variety of reasons. One, it's solid in content, in engagement. Two, it is easy for me to blend independent work with teacher-led work. And so it works well with my schedule and my kids can read the sections on their own. I can handhold during some of the notebooking activities and the science experiments are very straightforward. There's even a science lab experiment kit that you can purchase from Nature's Workshop that provides all the materials that you need. If you can afford the convenience, it is such a worthy investment. And that I don't think that we would get science labs done if I didn't have the kits already there for us. And third, as my kids are growing older, I appreciate that it is challenging. It is full of meaty material and the content really helps connect things together. So the whole Charlotte Mason idea of science of relations, I feel Apologia does a great job with connecting the dot. So you can see how everything works together under God. I think I really see that in the elementary years. In the beginning, I thought, oh, this might be too hard for my first grader. I started to question if it was a little little bit too rigorous for my first, second grader during those years. But as we got to third, fourth, fifth grade, I really gravitated towards Apologia because it really prepared them to advance to middle school level. And in our experience, the middle school science has been really effective in transitioning them into high school level science. Just to give you a rundown of the different curriculum that we've used from Apologia, as far as science, we've used Zoology 1, which is exploring creation with flying creatures. We've used Zoology 2, which is exploring creation with swimming creatures. We use the old version. This year, they are coming out with a brand new updated version that I've seen a few photos of, and it's just beautiful, which is really cool for those of you who have kids who are interested in oceanography and marine biology. We use the older unit of the Swimming Creatures curriculum and we had a blast. It was so much fun. That's like one of my favorite units because there was a project in there where we created an ocean box and slowly added to it all throughout the year. And that's one of the fun things about Apology is usually there is one overarching project that you do throughout the year and add to it as you learn more about it. And I just remember that year was really special to us because of the Swimming Creatures study. So by the time you see this video, the new version of Swimming Creatures is out. And so you can check that out in the link below. We also use Zoology 3, which is exploring creation with land animals. That was another fun one. There's so many animals to cover. So that was a really exciting year. We took a field trip to the zoo that year. We also used exploring creation with anatomy and physiology. And that was all about the human body. And I wanna say when I used that one, my kids were sixth, third, and kindergarten, something like that which I would recommend waiting until fourth, fifth, sixth grade. It was a little bit just out of grasp for my younger kids. 
And this year, like I mentioned, we are using Exploring Creation with Chemistry and Physics with my third and sixth grader. And this has been going really well for us this year. If you have kids that love hands-on activities and exciting experiments, this is a study to go for. There's a lot of uh, chemical reactions and each lesson has a main lab experiment, but within each lesson, there are mini experiments called Try This. And those are very easy to do, very minimal equipment and supplies. But my kids have been having a really good time with this one. I think it's the most hands-on and active science course we've used so far. And my son especially is really enjoying just all the visuals and hands-on learning with this course. We've also used the middle school curriculum. So exploring creation with general science. And I use that with my daughter in seventh grade. I would say that was our most helpful course in prepping her for high school level honors science. Like I said, she took that in seventh grade. So it was general science, a very broad scope of different topics in the science field. And what I really appreciated about it was not only did it teach science, but it also taught study skills, such as note taking and how to study for an exam. It really handholds that season of life well in transitioning them from science with the family to a more independent level of science. And while I was still there to help out, the course really did a great job of handholding them so that it was a lot more hands off for me. And I feel at that stage, they want to feel independence and they want to feel that sense of accomplishment. I did it, that they were able to complete things well without mom and dad. So I really credit Apologia's middle school science to moving her well into the next level. Then after that, in eighth grade, she took exploring creation with physical science, which again took her to another level. And so there's a little bit less handholding compared to general science, but still enough that if you didn't take general science, it would still help usher you into the high school level course. So now that she's in ninth grade and we're homeschooling with a charter school, she is taking an honors online biology course. And that is rigorous. The teacher is so knowledgeable in her field. The course is fast paced. They have group projects and presentations and dissections and lab experiments. So I'm very thankful to Apologia for helping us get to this point. It is a very rigorous course, nothing for the faint of heart, and she's managing it really well and she has a high A. Okay, so let's get to as many of these questions as we can from Instagram. The first one is, is there a certain order of topics you recommend? I will put up a scope of sequence suggested by Apologia. You don't have to follow this in any way, but it is helpful because some of the textbooks are written for younger kids in mind. The projects and experiments uh, may be easier for little hands. And like I mentioned, the anatomy and even this chemistry and physics curriculum, I would recommend for fourth through sixth grade. So here's K through six, kind of just their suggested sequence for science, but also on their website, you can see a full curriculum path chart that shows like elementary, middle, and high school, science, math, and elective options. So for preschool and kindergarten, and level, they do have a preschool science. For level one, they recommend astronomy, level two, botany, level three, zoology, one, two, or three level four, earth science, level five, anatomy and physiology, level six, chemistry and physics. So you don't have to follow that to a T, but that's just what they suggest. So the next question says, would you recommend Apologia for the early years? I have a first and a kindergartner coming up. Okay. Looking at the scope in sequence and in my experience, I would say I wouldn't use any formal curriculum for preschool. I would gather books from excellent book lists and start reading science books with beautiful illustrations, with great storytelling and do as much nature study as I could get outdoors and pairing books with outdoor experiences. My goal in those early elementary years is really to just build a momentum of curiosity of God's creation. I would definitely consider using the preschool science curriculum they have exploring creation together for kindergarten or first grade level. Is there one you may recommend for a second grader? Yes, I would recommend swimming creatures. That was one of my favorite ones to do. And I think I did it with a first or second grader and it was really fun. Um, Apology recommends second grade botany. So astronomy, botany, or I would say swimming creatures. It's just so much fun. There's a lot of great illustrations. The ocean is just fascinating to little ones and me. And there's a lot of things you can do outside of the textbook with aquarium visits. You can get a membership to one that year. This is what we did. And it just kind of helped. We made frequent visits to the aquarium that year and we're able to focus on the things that we were learning that year. You can do like if there's a whale watching type of excursion in your area, that's also really fun. You can get a pet 
pet fish if you're brave. That would be fascinating to see on a daily basis. Okay, a couple similar questions I'm gonna group together. Lab materials, are they easy to find? And do you have any tips on doing the science activities? Like I said, there are a lot of science activities in this curriculum. So in one lesson, I'm just gonna find a random lesson, like lesson eight in this book and count up the experiments. So there's one, two, three, four. So just in lesson eight, there are seven hands-on activities that you can do. Seven of them are try this activities, which are usually a lot easier, less supplies needed. And then there's one main lab experiment at the end of the lesson. So with eight lessons, how do you do it all? So I don't. One of the things that my husband does with our homeschool, how he helps is science experiments. That's a big one. He will take care of science experiments with the kids every other week, usually on a Friday. And he loves hands-on things and making messes and just having those experiences with the kids. But he really appreciates the box boxes from Nature's Workshop. If you haven't heard of it yet and you have the budget for it, it can be a real game changer as far as getting science labs done. They create lab kits for all different kinds of curriculum, but they have a ton of apologia. I want to say that they supply lab kits for every apologia curriculum because I've never been without one. I've always used the lab kits from Nature's Workshop. So for each lesson, like lesson eight, which we just looked at, has eight experiments, there will be most of the supplies in one zip block bag that has a label that says lesson eight. So the only things they wouldn't include are perishable items or things that are very common. But sometimes there are really common items in there as well, but all of the difficult to find items or things that you wouldn't want to just kind of order one off from Amazon, they're in that Ziploc already organized for you. So every other Friday, I would hand my husband this book along with the Ziploc bag from Nature's Workshop that's labeled lesson 10, for example. And I really don't know how productive we'd be with labs if we did not get the kit. And we also used it for middle school. So when my daughter was doing general science and physical science, we used the lab kits there as well. And she was able to do her lab experiments on her own, which I'm I'm just so thankful for. Okay, next question, kind of related. How do you not feel overwhelmed by all the activities? So we don't do all of the activities. Some of the try this activities are more complicated than I wanna do. With lesson eight, for example, we counted eight activities, right? I wouldn't do all eight unless we can fit them all in one day. But for the most part, we'll pick three-ish and then we'll do the main lab experiment. We just don't do it all. We'll pick the ones that are gonna have the most impact as far as learning and that are doable for us that don't seem too far-fetched. And so the reason mixed with uh, three to four experiments are just the right speed for us. We'll take about two weeks for each lesson. Okay, the next question says, how different are the junior notebooks from the regular one? I'm wondering if it'll work for first grade. Did use the junior notebooks for K through second grade, and then I switched to the regular notebooks. And Apology is actually phasing out the junior notebooks. They are not producing any new ones. Everything here on out will be the new notebook. So they're taking best pieces of the junior and the regular and putting them into one new notebook, and that's what's sold currently. There is still some supply of the junior version of the notebook, Books on some retailers and maybe on their site too. But once those are sold out, those are gone. My experience with the junior notebook has been good. There was coloring sheet, like a two page coloring sheet spread before each lesson. And then the activities were designed for younger kids. And two out of three of my kids were not really interested in coloring. So I did move them quicker to the regular notebooks. So here is the notebook that we're currently using. This is a regular notebook version. Both my fourth and sixth grader are using this. This is my daughter's version. And you can see there's some some cursive copy work. There's also the printed version. Let me turn the page printed version there of scripture. There's usually a crossword puzzle. There's also usually some kind of crafting, like cutting and pasting and writing down facts of what you learned in that lesson. And there's space to write down your observations and conclusions from the lab experiments. What did I do? What did I learn? And then what do you remember? So these are kind of like review questions from the chapter. This can be out while you're reading aloud so they can sort of start to fill in as you go. So this usually takes the full two weeks. Like they might answer a couple on one day of reading, another couple the next day, and then finish it off the second week since we take two weeks per lesson. I should have went in order, but at the beginning of each lesson in the notebook, there is a section on fascinating facts. So this is basically their written narration of each lesson. They'll take notes as I'm reading and illustrate it. And there's a lot of pictures within the book and I always try to hold it up and show them and they'll use that as reference for their own illustrations. So next school year, I'm excited to use the new version of the notebook. It'll actually be my first year using 
any of their updated versions and we are gonna do earth science next year with my elementary student and I purchased the new notebook to go with it. So I'll let you know how that goes. The next question is what are your favorite science books? This is a really great question because I do like to pair our science curriculum with living books. There are a lot of science books out there. A lot of them are fact-based and there is definitely space for that. And I like to have some of those reference books on hand, but I also like to pair them with living books. And I actually got to work with Apologia to pair living books with all of their elementary courses. So I think it'll be easier for me to leave a link below to some science living books I discovered. I got to go to the library often and do a lot of gathering. So that was a really fun project for me because I got to scour so many different book lists, go to the library often and pick up books and select the ones that were very engaging, that had great illustrations and really captivated us for a love of learning science. So I'll leave that book list link down below for easy access. So the last question I can get to today is how independent is Apologia Science? Okay, so with a fourth and sixth grader, I'll talk about where I am today. My kids can read the text on their own. So they're doing the same science. We have the same textbook they share and then they'll do their notebook on their own and we'll go over it. They'll show me their projects. They'll show me their mini books that they made. The three of us will sit and they'll share their fascinating facts and show their illustrations. I think it helps that they're both doing it. They kind of want to one up each other in a way and that's fine with me. I do check their work each time we do it in their notebooks. We do science two to three times a week. My involvement currently is just basically checking their work and my husband will do the science experiments. Everything else they'll be able to do on their own. And if I backtrack to two to three years ago, I was a lot more involved in that I would read aloud to them instead of them reading on their own. I would kind of walk them through the notebook and even help sometimes cut out things or figure out how it's supposed to be glued down in their notebook. But I want to say the reading is probably the most time it takes. So once I was able to let go of that part and they're reading on their own, that really changed how much time I'm spending sitting doing science with them. So now it's a lot more like they're teaching me, they're sharing what they learned, what they read about and what they wrote in their notebooks. And then in middle school, it gets even more hands-off where I was only checking the notebooks and they do have tests available and I would have my daughter take those. So just correcting those and that was it. And I'm so happy after all these years to be an affiliate with Apologia and have a discount code for 10% off. Anytime you use my link, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for supporting Juicebox Homeschool and just finding any value or encouragement in my channel. If you have any other questions about Apologia that I did not get to, go ahead and leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you. I will be using Apologia again for science next year, which I am looking forward to sharing all our curriculum picks for the new school year soon. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.